Hello, everyone. I'm Alana. I have a kind of unusual feature. I am a kleptomaniac. This is usually attributed to the disease, but I don't think so. For me, something like a game. Great excitement. I want to tell you about how, with this, I was able to open not an ordinary museum and earn not a bad amount. It all started at school. I didn't even notice it then. Not noticeably, took away from their classmates' pens, rulers, pencils, well, in general, every little thing. I did not do it on purpose. You can say, on a subconscious level, my hands mechanically clung to things. Later, my friends found out about it and started hiding everything from me. And if someone was missing something, they naturally thought right at me. And I couldn't stop. It's like something important without which I started to panic. I had a cat named Buddy. I think my peculiarity passed on to him. He always disappeared somewhere, and he always came back with some loot. It turned out that he entered through a special cat flap into other people's homes and brought out various small things, like food, shoes, clothing, and even jewelry. One day he had brought a bag of coins and a golf umbrella. I didn't throw away or sell all my stolen things, but kept them in my closet if honestly not knowing for what. It was a great excitement for me. Steal something without anyone noticing and get a shot of adrenaline. Each time I wanted more and more. Once, new neighbors moved in, and when they were moving things into the house, I noticed an unusual statuette among the boxes. It doesn't seem to be anything special, but I liked it very much, and the thought flashed through my mind that it must be mine. Well, you already know how. I have long thought about how to do it all. Fortunately, the family was friendly and invited us to a housewarming party. In the evening of the same day, we were already sitting at their house. We talked pleasantly and got to know each other. They were very funny. I sat and looked around the room. It was half empty and half of the things were still in the boxes. And here is my glance fell on the cupboard which stood in the corner. On the shelf next to the books, I noticed the same statuette. I almost screamed with delight. A plan began to form in my mind, but there was one disadvantage in this plan. Near this cabinet sat the owner of the house, and not noticeably, there is definitely not possible to get through. But I wasn't going to back down. I really needed her. Otherwise, I would not have calmed down. Different options came to mind, but not one of them fit. I didn't know what to do, and besides, the evening was coming to an end, and we had to leave soon. There was only one thought in my head, either today or never. I was starting to have a mini panic when suddenly there was a big crash in the other room. Everyone got up at once and ran towards the kitchen, and I used the moment to run like a bullet to the closet, grab the statuette, and ran home as soon as possible. Already at home, I threw it in my closet and decided to go back to the neighbor's. It all happened so quickly that no one noticed. As it turned out, the noise in the kitchen was created by Buddy. He, too, must have noticed his quarry. It was a bright, shining straw of unusual shape. But when he picked it up, he accidentally hit the plates and they all broke. You can say this situation with the cat helped me, so we were accomplices. Later, when I got home, I went to look at my closet. There is no small number of things gathered there. Of course, when I take these things, I get a lot of adrenaline. But on the other hand, I was ashamed. Simply so, return all things and blush over their deed, listening what I'm a thief, could not, or was afraid. And I came up with the idea to open a kleptomaniac museum. In it, I was going to display all the things that I stole and sign where and how I did it. Well, if someone finds out their thing, they can take it. My friend Adam helped me with the room. He had his uncle's garage available. It was just outside the shopping center. But it wasn't free. I have to pay a certain rent every month. Because of this, you had to pay to enter the museum. But I tried to put the smallest price. Suddenly, my museum became popular. Everyone was interested in what things were stolen and how. Even people came from other states but no one wanted to take them. On the contrary, other kleptomaniacs brought their own things, so the museum became more and more voluminous and interesting. 
and that statuette stood in the middle in the most honorable place as my most important trophy. Because of the large flow of people, the museum began to bring me not a small amount, and I was even able to open another museum with the money I earned, because they brought a lot of things. Of course, it's not good to steal other people's things, but kleptomaniacs can't do without it. It's like a game that brings a storm of emotions, and my peculiarity came in handy in another area. I got a job as an alarm tester, and I could already steal things at my own pleasure, but with a clear conscience. Thank you for listening to my stories, and I finally want to say that stealing is not good. Then I looked up, dried myself, and yelled. I wasn't standing in a mirror. There was a dog. That is, it was me, but with the head of a dog. It was some kind of black shepherd. Her eyes were looking right at me. I looked at my hands and noticed that I had grown a little fur, and I felt sick. I looked at myself again and remembered the soup. Greetings to all. How are you? I have a funny story that I want to share with your friends. To begin with, I would like to note all the same the great power of winding. Probably every one of you has ever done this. I think it's called psychosomatics. In general, not the point. Now you will see and hear everything. But for now, sit down, watch, and do not forget to put likes, write comments, and subscribe to the channel. By the way, yes, my name is Norman. Once my friend Neil and I were sitting at home and just dying of bored. At some point, Neil screamed. I was already scared. I thought that something might have happened, but my dear friend came up with an argument. Yes, he loved all sorts of arguments. He is always quite gambling. I don't encourage his addiction, but if his idea is fun, then why not? He offered me a mini exercise competition. That is, who will run faster, swim, bend higher and all that. He wrote down the tasks that the loser would have to complete. I roughly imagined that the tasks would be crazy. In general, yes, we chose the day, discussed the place, gathered other friends. Only I agreed to participate. Others did not trust Neil. Well, they did the right thing. We prepared everything we needed. Neil's girlfriend was the judge and we started. In fact, performing such simple competitions turned out to be much more fun than it seemed. It's been a long time since we frolicked and raged like this since we were older. I realized that I was in bad physical shape when I couldn't run the 100 meter distance faster than Neil. I was far behind, and this was my first loss. However, then I succeeded in swimming, so Neil lost. I also won the long jump, surprisingly, and the most recent task, the pull up on the rope, was won again by Neil. The score was 2-2-2. Two to two as if there were no losers, which meant that we divide the tasks in half. I was the first to pull out two pieces of paper, and Neil took the rest. My first task was to kiss the first grandmother I met. Oh shit, I thought, this is terrible. Everyone laughed, but a loss is a loss. We went down the street in a crowd, and I saw our neighbor, Mrs. Nelson, there. Damn, I didn't want to do that. She just loved kissing everyone. And it always left a wet mark on cheek. I went up to her and kissed her as if to say hello, but it was not clear who else kissed whom. She probably didn't let me go for two minutes. It was terrible. I began to dry off, wished her a good day, and we left. Neil, in turn, opened his task. He had to run naked down the street. Dude, what are your tasks so vulgar? I asked him. He just smiled broadly at me in response, immediately took off his pants and ran. All our guys were yelling, filming him and laughing loudly and I couldn't believe that I was friends with him. After running a lap, he came back to us, dressed, and immediately opened the second task. He had to steal apples from the garden of our neighbor, Mr. Charles. Oh no, you just don't know him. He's a beast. He was so angry that he yelled whenever we accidentally stepped on his lawn, stroked his dog, or just looked out the window. But all neighbors knew that he had a gorgeous garden with beautiful apples in his backyard, and he never treated anyone. So, to steal the apples from his garden was to risk his life. But Neil is not a simple guy. He adjusted his caps and moved towards the neighbor's yard. We were there in 10 minutes. At lunchtime, our neighbor was almost always asleep, so we sneaked into his house. I was on the lookout, and Neil climbed over the fence and ran to pick apples. After a couple of minutes, he threw us about 7 apples and climbed the fence himself. At that moment, he heard a shot. Oh my god, we were so scared but our neighbor was shooting blanks to scare us off. We somehow gathered fruit and ran away from there so that the heels sparkled, and then there was my last task. It was quite unusual. I had to try the dog soup. Ugh, what a mess. Neil, how could you? I asked him. He just laughed.
He told me that he just almost lost his life while picking apples, and I'm like, can't I try some soup? I was embarrassed. I asked where I would do it, and he said that there is a Korean neighborhood with restaurants behind our block. We agreed to meet him there together and went there in the evening for dinner. As soon as we entered, an unfamiliar smell hit our nostrils, and a young waitress came up to us and brought us a menu. Neil immediately asked her to bring the dog soup, and she nodded politely. To be honest, I was very uneasy, because I had never eaten a dog before in my life and could not even imagine that they were eaten. And Neil, it turns out, had noticed this restaurant for a long time and did not know how to get me there. So you made all this up just to eat it here? And he was like, I know you wouldn't have agreed otherwise. I asked, but how did you know that I would lose and choose this particular task? To which my friend replied, I didn't know, but even if I lost, you would still come with me to make sure. This would be my cunning and devious friend. When the order was brought to us, I was surprised. A deep bowl was placed on the table with the most ordinary meat broth at first glance. It was served with boiled rice, a lot of herbs, garlic, salt, pepper, chopped onions, and a lot of red pepper mixed into a mush. I didn't even know how to eat it, and the waitress did everything herself. She just mixed all the ingredients in one bowl and it's done. Neil ordered one of those too, and repeated it. I didn't even realize right away that that meat was dog meat. In appearance, the most simple boiled meat. Hesitantly, I scooped up the first spoonful and tasted quite a bit. Mmm, it was not bad, quite delicious. And then I realized that if you don't think about who you're eating, it's delicious. Neil and I ate everything in 10 minutes and a pleasant warmth spread throughout my body. I made my friend promise that he would never tell anyone about this. He agreed, but asked me to come here more often now because he wants to try many other dishes. I came home full, tried not to think about who I had eaten, but nevertheless, I did my controversial duty. The next morning I woke up in the middle of the night, covered in sweat. I looked around and saw that the clock is still 3 a.m., and I somehow feel uneasy. I got out of bed and went to wash, turned on the water, washed, and somehow felt strange. Then I looked up, dried myself, and yelled. I wasn't standing in a mirror. There was a dog. That is, it was me, but with the head of a dog. It was some kind of black shepherd. Her eyes were looking right at me. I looked at my hands and noticed that I had grown a little fur, and I felt sick. I looked at myself again and remembered the soup. I immediately ran back into the room, took out the phone, and immediately began to dial Neil. Do you know what time it is? He asked, and I tell him that I have become a dog, but he does not understand. And then I realized that I wasn't talking, but barking. Hello? Is this a joke? Dude, you got yourself a dog or something? Hello? My friend asked, and I was completely scared. After I hung up, I sat on the bed and again began feeling his face. Then there was a knock in the room. I wanted to say don't come in and barked again. My mother came into the room. She'll scream at the sight of me. I ran up to her, but she didn't fall to the ground. I wanted to say something to her, but I just barked and barked. Damn, why did I eat this soup? There is really something about him. Why did I become a dog and Neil didn't? Why is this happening? I thought and tried to help my mother. She screamed and then fainted. I tried to call the ambulance again, but this time my fingers wouldn't work. It seemed to me that everything was over. This is some kind of nonsense. Then I heard my mother's voice again. Norman, Norman, get up. I asked her, what's mom? Are you feeling better? And she said to me again, get up, you'll oversleep. Norman, she shouted, and I opened my eyes. Suddenly I saw my mother walking around the room, opening the curtains, and I was lying in bed. After a few seconds, I got up and ran to the mirror. Oh yes, thank God it was a dream. Hooray, I said under my breath. My mother asked me what was wrong. And I smiled at her and asked her to make me some coffee. She came down the stairs. It was a good thing it was only a dream. Then I got a text from Neil. Dude, are you up? Everything is normal? I replied that now yes. And then I get a message. And you called me yesterday and barked several times. Did you buy a dog? He wrote to me. And my skin crawled again. 